Hey guys, how's it going? So I've been planning, I've been meaning to do a bunch of videos on Void, on the sequence. Uh, what I And I was planning to do them on a VM actually. So I, I had this Void Linux VM installed, but what I, is, what I click, quickly discovered is that uh, the VM was so old that uh, essentially if you've been using Void, you know that they changed the version of XPPS from 0.53. And uh, essentially that was the version that I had installed on my VM. And it turns out that the newest versions actually use a, a different packaging method for the download downloads and stuff. So my XPPS on the other machine essentially didn't work. And now I have to install a new VM from scratch. And I figured since I'm doing that, uh, this, I might as well uh, make my own void Linux installation video, even despite the fact that there are a bunch of them on the internet, I figured why not? Maybe I have something to add there. So with that said, uh, I have I haven't installed it on this version specifically. This is the newest Void ISO that they had. So this is November two thousand nineteen, I believe, something like that. I think I installed it in September, so that's why I I haven't got I haven't gotten to use this one. Now I suppose that this is going to be business as usual. So I'm just going to install it using the Void installer. Have to sudo that. Yep. So I'm going to put this end curses thing in full screen and you're going to get to it. So again, I have the description enter, you hit okay. Now, the good thing about the void installer is that it's very straightforward as you can see. You just go down this list, choosing stuff and then you're ready to go. So let's not lose a lot of time here. I'm going to use the, which one is it? I'm going to use the US uh, key map just because that's what I prefer. If you have another language, obviously, if you want another input method, that's where you would choose it. So I'm going to go with US. Setting up the network. This is a VM, so it just sees an Ethernet. But in reality, it's just a bridged adapter to my network. So it's going to receive a, an address on my home uh, network. It should it should be all right. Yes, network is working properly. Source. Now, if you're doing a graphical install, you don't want to use the network. You're going to use the local. So I'm just going to choose the local and it's going to install from the contents of my of my USB drive. In this case, the ISO file. Host name, I'm just going to set it to something, whatever. I'm going to call it Void Linux, I usually do. Locale, this is going to, well, locale is just going to determine. I'm going to pick uh, whichever, I'm going to pick uh, English, I suppose United States, time zone. I'm going to put it in Europe. I'm going to put it that's what because that's where I am at currently. So root password. Uh you're going to put a very secure password. Obviously, the recommendation is something bigger than than 12 characters. I I may even do a video on that later because I really like the topic of passwords, but as of right now, I'm going to put something really bad. So don't worry. User account, I'm going to make a user called void. I'm going to give him a very secure password. And with regards to groups, now, most of the time this is, uh, you don't really need to change this that much. I never changed it myself. I guess you could, uh, but uh, again, what's important is that you belong to the wheel group because the wheel group is what has access to pseudo commands. So unless you are, Unless, uh, so yeah, you, you really don't want to be root, but you want to be on the wheel group. This is the important one. The other ones, if you want, I mean, if you know what you're doing, you may put, uh, say, for example, you may want to put yourself in the LXDM group. But uh, again, it depends on what you want and what you need. I'm going to go with OK. Bootloader, I'm going to install it on my current partition. I'm not going to make a very complex installation. Use a graphical terminal, why not? Partition. Now this is the scary part for most people, but uh, we're going to go through that. It's not that hard. So I'm going to choose my disk. This is I, I have separated this eight gig space for my virtual box. I'm going to hit yes. And now what you want to do is you want to choose a label type of DOS. And I have some free space now. There are several ways to set up your partition table. I'm not going to go into the details. What I recommend to you guys is that you make uh, three partitions, right? One partition that would be your swap space. You want your swap space to usually be double the size of your RAM. 
and then you want two other partitions. So you want a partition that's going to be your root uh, and a partition that's going to be your home. And the, the logic for that is that if you ever change distributions, your home, your data should remain the same. So, you know, if your binaries cra uh, break or if you lose your operating system for whichever reason, you still have that data on another partition. With that said, I'm just going to make uh, it the simplest way. So I'm going to set a partition type of eight gigs, which means that I'm going to use all the space that's available. I'm going to set it as primary. And what's important here is that you set it as bootable as well, because otherwise it's uh, you're not going to be able to boot from it essentially. Since this is the only one of the partitions that's bo uh, that that we have, it needs to be bootable. Otherwise, the machine itself won't be bootable. So I'm going to set it to write this, and this is going to enter uh, what I just uh, configured on the partition table. I'm going to press uh, to say yes, hit enter, and that's done, we can quit. Now configure file systems and mount points. What I'm going to do is if you were to, if previously you had, uh, you had repartitioned yours, what would happen is that you would have three partitions, so you would have one that you would use for a swap, and then the other two would most likely be ext4 because that's the usual data uh, partition on Linux. So as of right now, I'm, I, since I have one that is uh, one partition that's supposed to be everything, both data and the uh, root files, I'm going to simply choose ext4, and then I'm going to specify the mount point is going to be root. So everything, the whole root of my Linux file tree is going to be mounted at this partition, which is dev sda1, which is the only partition I have. Hit OK. Yes. And uh, done. So since this is the only one, this is the only one that I, since this is the only partition I have, this is the only one I need to configure. And I'm going to go ahead and install it. Uh, it's going to say that uh, everything is going to be installed on that. So make sure that you did your partitioning right. And let's hit yes. Now it's going to take a while. Uh, you're not. You don't need to. I, I think I'll just uh, uh, speed up the video after that. But uh, here you should have a good idea of uh, how it works. So again, you could. You saw that this is a very straightforward process. And uh, you know, I usually do, uh, make this comparison which, with with uh, Arch Linux because this is what I use the most. And uh, Arch Linux, you'll have a huge, huge wiki page telling you how to install step by step. You'll have a CLI only type of installation. So, you know, one of the things that I like about Void is that you can just spin it up and it's installed already. So usually when I installed Arch, I had this little cheat sheet by my side. I still have it somewhere, tucked somewhere, but uh, I don't really need it anymore. And if I have a Void Linux ISO, I can just uh, install it, no problem, like out of brain, uh, out of, again, muscle memory, you can even say that. So it installs very, rather quickly because again, a void itself is very minimal as, as you shall see. And from the moment that we start installing it, um, from the moment it's installed, I mean, you, you're going to see that it's very, very minimal and even more minimal than Arch in most, in most cases because uh, what one of the, one of the heaviest thing, not necessarily the, the heaviest, but one of the most monolithical things you're going to find on an Arch Linux machine, for example, is obviously the systemd. And when you use run it again, you're kind of making things simpler on yourself. So once again, let's see if I can keep up the conversation while it finishes. And uh, what else? So yeah, uh, again, using that uh, little CLI based installation, the, the partitioning. If you did vo if you did Arch Linux before, you obviously know how to use a uh, FDisk. So, uh, and uh, it it can look scary, but what, again, what's important on an installation is that you know that there are those, I would say, three basic types of partitions that you want. That is to say, you want a data partition, you want a root partition, and you want swap space. And if you want, you can even have a boot partition. Some guys are going to uh, to say that this is not necessarily obliged. They, it's going to go into your root uh, file system if you don't specify anything, obviously. But uh, it's it's also interesting if your grub breaks, for example, you have uh, everything well separated and stuff. 
So this is one thing to take into, into consideration. And uh, again, with regards to sizing, your, your root for void Linux, it shouldn't be bigger than some 20 gigs maybe, 30 gigs if you want to go safe, if you have a lot of software to install. But uh, void, it comes with uh, very few programs by default. And you're only really going to have the things that you really need. So there's not that, mu that much bloat as compared to say something like uh, Ubuntu. Again, it's nothing wrong with bloat. It's just that uh, if you want a, a more minimal system, a system that you have more control over, you have that under control. Now it's going to build the Initrum FS. It's almost finished. And once that's finished, we're just going to, re uh, to boot it and see that everything went okay. So... Yeah, again, this was the installation in a nutshell. It's very convenient that this is that it is on the command line. So I'm back. Uh, I just made that cut there so that we can uh, go directly to it. It took a, a few seconds to finish up with the installation. And now it prompted me if I want to reboot, I'm going to say yes. It's going to again reboot from that thing, close this. Yep. Run, it goes down. And I will see if it boots normally. Now, it should still boot on my live uh, USB because that's how I set it to do. What I'm going to say is I'm going to tell it to boot first from the HD. So it's going to boot from the hard disk. You can see that I'm grub. So this is the grub that I just installed. And I'm going to hit enter. And normally, I should be able to boot inside this void. So it already came pre-installed with uh, XFC. I find that it's a bit uh, simpler because I'm going to do some demonstrations with this later. I don't want to lose too much time with um, with the setup. Now it should bring up the login manager. And there it goes. I'm going to put my very secure password. Just going to adjust the, the display settings. Obviously on VirtualBox, it's going to uh, sometimes do something uh, such as this with your resolution. You can just change the settings, obviously. So as for, with regards to ins installation, this is the, the most important. And uh, once again, I, I'm installing this machine because I'm planning on doing some other void related stuff. So be on the lookout for that and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye bye.